to our Bible study inspiration brought to you by JEOP Evangelistic Outreach Project. I'm your leader for this afternoon, Evangelist Jared O. If this is your first time joining us, we welcome you as well. We encourage all to stay to the end. Yes, yeah, stay to the end. That's such a blessing in the end. Stay there. The Bible study inspiration with others. We're going to have our scripture reading coming from our legacy generation. Psalms 100. Shout joyful to the Lord. All the earth serve the Lord with your gladness. Come before him joyful singing. Now that the Lord himself is God, it is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of his pastors. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praises. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. He is the loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. You know what? I have a question as always. Yes, I do. This is the question. Do you believe in the joy of believing to you or to myself my one self believe in the joy of believing it's not a trick question at all we're going to take a look at Jehoshaphat do you know who Jehoshaphat is who this famous faithful woman of God is do you know who Jehoshaphat is okay I'll tell you what Get your Holy Scriptures. Turn with me, if you will, now to Exodus chapter 2. See who Jehoshaphat really is. Okay, we're going to see what happens here in the joy of believing. It's such an encouraging word, my brothers and my sisters. Faith, we're going to look at faith. We're going to see what form this couple's faith in Christ Jesus. Exodus chapter 2. We're going to start reading at verse 1. All right, and the word of God reads, Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. Two, the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was beautiful, she hid him for three months. Verse 3. But when she could hide him no longer, she got him a wicker basket and covered it over with tar and pitch. Then she put the child into it and set it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. Verse four, his sister stood at a distance to find out what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the Nile with her maidens walking along the Nile, alongside the Nile. And she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid and she brought it to her. her sits. And when she opened it, she saw the child and behold, 
the boy was crying and she had pity on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Amen, amen. The joy in believing to you or I, do we have the joy in simply believing in the word of God? Do you believe in Christ Jesus? Do I believe in Christ Jesus? We see here this Jehoshaphat. We're going to, need to talk about a little bit about who she is, who she was, about her faith, and how her faith was formed. Before we can do that, we must go back and look at what happened in Exodus chapter 1. It's so important to see what formulated, what was going on in the world and society during that time that helped formulate her faith in God. It formulated her decision, Jehoshaphat's decision to go across the grain as she did. So let's look at Exodus chapter 1. And when you get a chance, I need you, you know, you know we study to show ourselves for prudence to God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed now, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I need you to go back to it and read chapter 1 and read chapter 2, but read to get understanding of God's word. Amen. Yes, so does chapter 1, starting at verse 6. Joseph died, and all his brothers, and all that generation. Verse 7. But the sons of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly and multiplied and became exceedingly mighty so that the land was filled with them. Now a new king arose over Egypt, Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more mightier than we. Verse 10, come, let us deal wisely with them, or else they will multiply, and in the event of war, they will also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land. Verse 11, so they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labor, my Lord. And they built for Pharaoh storage cities, Python and Ramses. Verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out, so that they were in dread of the sons of Israel. The Egyptians compelled the sons of Israel to labor rigorously. Verse 14, and they made their lives bitter and with hard labor in mortar and bricks and all kinds of labor in the field. And all their labors, which they rigorously imposed on them. Verse 15, Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other whose name was Pua. 16, and he said, when you are helping the Hebrew women to give birth and see them upon the birth stool, if it is a son, my Lord, then you should put him to death, my Lord. But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. Verse 17, but the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but let the boys live. Verse 18, so the king of Egypt called
cold for the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this thing and let the boys live? Verse 19, the midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife can get to them. Verse 20, so God was good to the midwives and the people multiplied and became very mighty. Verse 21, because the midwives fear God, he established households for them. Verse 22, then Pharaoh commanded all his people saying, Every son who was born, you are to cast into the Nile, and every daughter you are to keep alive. My Lord, my Lord. Then we see where Jehoshaphat and her husband, Aram, we see them, and they were from the, their genealogy from the tribe of Levi. We see here that the Word of God says, we read it here in, in chapter 2, that when, when Jehoshaphat, at this time, she already had two children, that's Aaron and Miriam. And we know that Aaron is the first high priest. And we know her daughter, Miriam, as uh, Jehoshaphat put the child in the, the, the basket. And as the child went down the river, Miriam stood and watched. All right, so we see here that uh, Ahmad and Jehoshaphat, they're from the tribe of Levi. So we can know that their teachings taught them about their faith, their belief and trust and faith in the Most High God. Their belief in it cultivates their faith, if I must say that. And here we saw, we just read here the decree that was sent out by Pharaoh about killing the male child. He wanted them to just be killed. Cast them into the Nile. Cast all male child into the Nile, the Nile River. And we see what Jehoshaphat and her husband did. They hid the child. They hid the child for three months. It talks a lot about her faith. It says too that when Jehoshaphat, when she looked down at her son, she knew that her son was beautiful. That's where her faith comes in. She knew that her son was beautiful. We as believers, my brothers and my sisters, oftentimes we can look at our children and we can see how beautiful they are. We can begin to look and see how our faith in God cultivates into our child as we speak blessings over their lives. We speak blessings over and into their lives. Jehoshaphat faith that she had, she nursed a child. She nursed that child. And when she could no longer nurse the child, with her faith taught her what she needed to do as God had given her wisdom. God gives us all wisdom. The word of God teaches us, if any man like wisdom, just ask of the Lord. And the Lord, God Almighty, will give us wisdom that we need. And with all things, get understanding as well. Jehoshaphat. Oh, it's such a beautiful lesson in teaching. Her, just her name alone, Jehoshaphat, is a Hebrew name. And her Hebrew name means Jehovah is glory. Jehovah is glory. My Lord, my Lord, Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty, is glory. That's what her her, her name means, I, I want to say too that Jehoshaphat and her husband, their faith was cultivated to the point and place that they knew what Abraham, the promises of faith that Abraham showed. 
They knew the promises that God had given Abraham. So they knew. And we know that Jehoshaphat's son end up being Moses. Hmm. The Lord heard the cries of his people. The Lord knew what he himself had promised the generations and generations ahead of time. God heard the cries of the people. God then chose and called Moses, Jehoshaphat's son, Moses, who did not grow up in her household because we find, as you find in your studies, when you go back and read, we'll see that Pharaoh's daughter was the one who had raised and reared Moses and she called the child. Moses. Amen. Amen. So we see here, Moses, the Lord said to Moses, just go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses' faith, Jehoshaphat's faith, Aaron's faith, her husband's faith, and Miriam's faith. It formulated who they became, who they were, and it even formulates us now too my brothers and my sisters. Where is our faith in God? Do, where is the joy? Do we have the joy in believing? You know, I want to suggest to us in looking at the readings and studies that when Jehoshaphat put her son in the basket and put him in the Nile River, that, that was her faith. When I, and I mean by that is that was her faith because she did not know at that time how her child was going to turn out. But Jehoshaphat knew that she believed God and believed in the Word of God. My Lord, do you believe in Christ Jesus? Do you believe that there is joy in believing? Jehoshaphat did not know at that time that her son would be chosen to go back and bring back God's people. She didn't know that at that time, but she knew that her son was beautiful. She saw as a mother, I want to say, she saw something very special within her child. Aaron being the first high priest, the first high priest. They're from the lineage of Jacob and Leah. What an awesome, awesome story that we all can learn the joy in believing. There's such a joy in believing in Christ Jesus. Have you as a parent noticed that your child is beautiful? You know, we all have purpose in life. We all have purpose in life. We know that God has given us all purpose. We must see, seek God and begin to walk in purpose. As a mother, as a, as, a, as a parent, have your child ever been sick? Has your child ever been in trouble? Has your child ever been, ever been defiant and disobedient? You as a mother, my brothers and my sisters, have you found yourself believing in God and knowing that there is joy in believing because you already know, you live in the now faith, you already know how everything is going to turn out already? You already know. So as you begin to pray, one's prayer life, as we often talk about, the joy you got to, we must have that prayer life in Christ Jesus. My Lord, my Lord, the joy in believing. To Hawkbear and her spouse, Oman, their faith in God. To Hawkbear's faith in God as a mother. She trusts God. She activated her now faith in God. Joy in believing in Christ Jesus. Amen. Most holy God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior. Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord God. Oh God, we thank you for your teachings, Father God. 
upon Jehoshaphat, the teachings on Moses and Aaron and Miriam, Lord God. Oh God, we pray and we ask, Father God, that you give us all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. Lord God, let our faith increase to a different level, Father God, in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you smiling? Are you smiling? Yes, we know that smile can go a long way. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. My brothers and my sisters, we ask all to share. Yes, share the Bible study inspiration with others. We'll see you again on next week. God bless you.